Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back. Um, I hope you all are having an amazing day today or whenever you watch this video. I hope your day is going well. Today's high is between, I would say 76 and 78. It is currently around 72 degrees outside. So I thought I'd go outside and see what I can harvest, what I can encourage to grow. And um, there's a lot of herbs that I have that needs to be snipped. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get straight into that. So if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. My name is Helen and I am in zone nine. Um, you have to excuse me. I'm a little stuffy today. I don't know if the, the lavender dust got to me or what. But anyway, I am in Houston, Texas. And um, I'm growing food in my backyard. <laughs> So let's start off with some mint. We all know that mint has a lot of good benefits for you, whether you're making your own toothpaste, whether you're putting it in tea or drying it for other herbs, such as like um, some hair care, hair growth, or infusing it in oils. Um, peppermint has a lot of really good stimulant benefits. So I like to dry it, me personally, and put it in teas. Oftentimes we'll take it fresh, we'll add it to lemonade or um, maybe just a nice sparkling water or a sparkling um, alcoholic beverage right and it just gives it that burst of like a uh, flavor very refreshing so peppermint is definitely one of my favorite herbs to grow we have two tubs of it in the backyard so I'm trying to encourage it to bush out and not just grow long legs of uh, peppermint which is currently doing so today's goal is to go through and chop off as much as i can so that it bushes out and becomes fuller and hopefully before the season is over with you know before it gets too hot right i'm able to harvest a lot you'll see me harvest quite a bit today but once it dries down it pretty much dries down to nothing so i would need to harvest about mm, five or six of these barrels for it to even look like something but we don't put a lot of it in our teas when we do use the tea when it's dry we only use like a teaspoon added on to other herbs so it's not like i need a lot right now but i do plan to harvest as much as i can this year and when it comes to just using it fresh you kind of muddle it a little bit at the bottom of a jar or a glass add your liquid beverage and then you only need like a few leaves at a time Welcome to the channel. Hope you stay around this season in, in um, gardening. And if you've been around a while, welcome back. I appreciate you coming back to hang with me every single time. All right, moving on over to this area. I do have some Asian basil. I forget what it's called. It smells really good. For some reason, I get the Asian basil and my anise mixed up. So hopefully this is the Asian basil. basil. I think it is. But it smells so freaking good. I'm going to harvest some because as you see, I have these long, lengthy like legs over here. And I stems. And I just want to make them a little bit more bushy. So it's almost like I'm topping them off. And I'm kind of late on doing this. So hopefully I don't damage the plant. But I'm hoping that it will bush and I can dry some. And we can use some for like when we're cooking. On to stevia. So stevia has a lot of benefits too, especially when it comes to those who don't want to use sugar in their everyday um, foods, drinks, or whatever. And you just want something that's no calories, no sugar, but is a sweetener. Um, you can definitely grow your own plant, dry your own leaves out, um, blend them or muddle them where they come into like a powder form and just use it as a sweetener so we just add it to smoothies and stuff like that so I'm going to wash some of this as well dry it up and throw it in a jar and just like any other time that I walk the garden if I see something that doesn't look good that needs to be I'm taking out of these beds. I just pull it out while I'm there. And I had a few little old um, leaves over here from the bok choy that has gone to seed. And I thought I'd just take it out so it wouldn't attract bugs. All right, so in this little box right here, they used to be my tea boxes, but 
they're just a mishmash of things right now i have some um pineapple sage i keep saying pineapple basil i don't know why they will grow these flowers later that you can dry that are really good and tasty as well for teas if you want like a reddish color tea or you can just harvest the leaves and dry the leaves i'm going to dry the leaves for like um like a herbal like seasoning however um they do have their own benefits. So make sure you look it up if you're interested in trying out any of these herbs. And one day maybe we'll do like a medicinal herb video. Where we'll talk about all the herbs I'm growing and why. I'm going to harvest the carrots as well as the tops and then I'll use the tops in juice today. got to make sure that when the next season come around or before summer ends when I drop my carrot seeds I want to drop a huge area of carrots so I can go ahead and freeze them because they're good for my smoothies they're good for just cooking I do enjoy carrots we like them fresh as well so yeah I'm going to make sure I grow a lot of carrots next time around um, I didn't even know that these seeds had fallen into this box so it was a good find um, I am harvesting just a few nasturtium flowers we like them in our salads and we don't eat a lot of them because you can eat too much of this you know um, it is high in vitamin C there's a lot of information out there in regards to nasturtiums but mainly truthfully I grow them for the beauty of the flower I like that they kind of like bush out and they grow fast, but I absolutely love the fact that they are a trap crop. So they trap harmful bugs that we don't want in our food, right? And it takes away from my food getting eaten up by bugs that, you know, are beneficial to the land, but it'll go to nasturtiums instead. Now, lemon balm, y'all already know, that's my zhuzh. The more you cut it, the more it'll grow. It will actually take over. And I don't want it to smother my bed, but I want this thing to be huge and full. Like I had last year, we were able to harvest a ton of lemon balm, which is good for anxiety. Um, when, if you dry it and put it in a tea, it helps with sleep. If you, <laughs> But if you take too much, honey, you're going night-night, okay? So once again, you know, while I'm out here, I saw this flower open. I got excited. I went ahead and popped one of the flowers that's a female flower so I can um, pollinate it with the male flower. And that way we can get us some squash, honey, zucchini. I'm so ready. That flower is so huge. Y'all, I'm so excited about gardening this season. I'm just praying for a really nice, bountiful harvest this entire season so once again a few more nasturtiums i'm going to add it to some salad today i'll have it for the kids if they just want to top of their salads but you can harvest them you can wash them put them in a salad spinner and just put them in a container so whenever you want to use them for like asian wraps or um i don't know salads or just beautiful flowers to put on a charcuterie board they're, you know, they're not too harmful. You can eat too much of it, though. So you have to make sure you read and do your research. We are climbing to the more higher temps. So I had some lettuce that popped up and I thought I'd just go ahead and take it out this bed. No need to keep it there. I'll just eat it today, harvest it or whatever, because at the end of the day, it's going to um, get, uh, probably attract bugs or go to seed anyway, because yeah, that is just has a horrible time growing here in Texas um, around this season. It is what it is. So I have some walking onions that I like to chop up every once in a while. And well, actually, girl, we come out here weekly and like chop one or two of these. They grow so freaking fast. But I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of these too, wash them up, chop them up and put them in the fridge. Now, um, I have chopped these before, threw them in my air fryer on low, like dehydrating it. And just having like some dried onions just to add like chives to like meals. And it's really good. 
This is one thing I'm going to have to try to figure out how to grow more of and it's dill. We like to add dill to a lot of our like uh, dressings and the kids will add it to like a mayo, like a spicy dill mayo, like for sandwiches. And of course we use dill when we're making pickles. So we don't have enough at all, but I had to trim that back to hopefully bush it out. So fingers crossed, I can grow a lot of dill. I have enough space. I'm just waiting for it to grow. Now on to our lavender. Every time I see lavender, I just harvest it automatically. I have a jar that I keep in my tea cabinet. It's a dark, cool cabinet. And all I do is take these uh, lavender toppers, uh, wash them real good, throw them in the air fryer, right? I let them dry out or sometimes I'll just hang them to dry. When you go to harvest the flowers, sometimes they're dusty. And that's why I can barely talk today because <laughs> I got a lot of dust in my throat, I think, from the <laughs> lavender. But, y'all, it's so good in teas. It's really good in essential oils, just like this uh, rosemary I'm showing you. You can use it for skin. You can use it for hair, your nails, your cuticles. Or you can just use it in at its dry form as like a seasoning or like a herb, you know, like a spice or whatever. So, And then you can mix these if you need to do like a lavender or a rosemary essential oil it's really good so at this point i'm just washing all the vegetables cleaning them up and the herbs so i can go ahead and either air fry and dry them wrap them up and dry them or just um put them in the fridge These carrots are so pretty and actually this one was pretty sweet. I was surprised because I had left them in there so long. That's the one good thing about carrots. When you're growing carrots, you do not have to harvest them all at one time. At one point I've pulled like a several, I don't know, three or four carrots out of the other box. And I just left those in there thinking oh, I'll put them when I'm ready. As long as they're not like, uh, it's not extremely hot. You're not oversaturated with water. The carrots will pretty much do fine in the dirt, right? And um, yeah, so they look good. They taste good. And like I said, I plan on growing so much more. Now, don't forget, if you like to juice or like to make smoothies, it's a little herbaceous, the actual taste of the leaves, the toppers, but they're good too. They have a lot of beneficial um, minerals and vitamins in them. So make sure you're adding that to your smoothies and your juices as well. I did that today with pineapple, ginger, and uh, pineapple, ginger. I forgot the other one, y'all. <laughs> um the salad top the uh carrot toppers and i forgot and i'm drinking it that's crazy but it was so good so yeah don't forget to add that now once again i just used this twine to separate them because i knew i was going to wash them separately and then i was going to dry them separately that way when i jar them i knew what um which was which right because if you look at the mint it looks like spearmint. Even though it smells a little different, it looks pretty much the same. Almost it smells the same when you uh, dry it out. So I want to keep them separate. But you'll see here, I'm just going to go through and wash them real good. I add vinegar to the water to make sure that I am getting rid of any bugs that may be on my food. Luckily, I haven't had any experiences with bugs this year except for one plant that had... Um, some eggs. I don't know if they were aphid eggs or these white fly um, eggs. They were little bitty round white balls and I just got rid of it instead of trying to treat it. It's too early on in the season and I'm not in the mood to treat anything right now. So I'm just trying to keep everything healthy in my garden. I know a lot of people aren't big on paper towels. Y'all know I'm not a huge fan either. But around this time, you know, we're spring cleaning. I did pick up a couple rolls. Plus, I want to use them to dry out my herbs. 
And um, yeah, just not a huge fan of having them. We use a lot of um, napkins, cup towels, whatever you want to call them, tea towels. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pat these dry. I have these little paper, um, they're called like air frying papers. They, I think they call them air frying pan papers. You can get them from Amazon. I got mine from Timu. And all I did was dry these out and set them into the paper just to put them to the side you'll see me do that in a little bit now i do like the original back in the day method where you would take your herbs you would use your twine you would tie it up hang it in like your laundry room your pantry you know wherever your cellar okay and you will let your herbs dry out so i'm gonna do that for this bundle because i don't need it all right now and then you'll see me dry a second batch of the mint in the air fryer I started to go ahead and get a little bit more to put in the fridge so when the kids make their iced teas they can add um, the mint to it but they go outside and pick from it all the time so I wasn't tripping but I went ahead and washed off some of these onions y'all these onions smell so good so walking onions are very fragrantful right they almost um, mimic like a lighter um, taste of garlic to me like a fresh garlic that's how strong these are these are so good and nothing like getting onions from the grocery store at all and yeah i i don't even want to think about buying green onions from grocery store i'm currently trying to grow red onions so it's just so crazy once you taste something fresh out of the garden everything else in the stores just does not taste right <laughs> you're like what is this I have never had a green onion be this fragrantful like ever. But like I said, we've been growing this same little bush for about four years now. And um, yeah, it hasn't died on me yet through the snow, through the heat. So yeah, we're going to keep chopping from it for sure. So I'm just chopping some up and putting it in one of our prep containers. The containers are listed in my Amazon storefront under, um, I believe it is Kitchen it's either kitchen essential or kitchen must-haves, but I'll make sure I'll link it down below. So these are the papers I was talking about that you can put in your air fryer. It keeps your air fryer from being messy. Now, the only reason why I used it for the rosemary is because they're small in size, but the larger like leaf things, I can just throw it in the air fryer or use our silicone air fryer um, mold. Let me tell you. This rosemary smells so good. I like it when it's dried in our teas. When it's just fresh like this, you can just add this into a like a dark colored jar, like an amber jar. Maybe a carrier oil such as almond, jojoba, a little vitamin E. Um, and then just put it away for a little while, a couple months, and let it infuse. And it's so good for your skin. All right, so of course, y'all know me and mint and lemon balm. If I'm going to air fry it or dry it, I have to pull it off these stems. And um, they're the perfect size to put into a colander most of the time. If you have the larger plant, you probably need a larger colander with the larger holes. But you just kind of put it in there and let it do its thing. So over here on the side, you'll see this is where I use some of the mint, the fresh mint. That's what it was, celery, <laughs> pineapple, ginger, and the carrot tops. And that's what I use today to make my green juice. This really does come in handy when you are trying to do a lot of mint at one time. So I ended up with like two bowls. And it's just like spinach, y'all. It's going to cook down to absolutely nothing. But the benefits of it is so good. Even the smallest amount is good for you. All right. So, of course, we're back at the sink again. And I am washing the lemon balm. Now, um... I don't really let my kids have the lemon balm. I keep it in a separate jar. I do not mix it with teas, not anymore. I've noticed that um, they knock out easy with it. 
It's really good and soothing for anxiety, um, stress, um, like anxiousness, right? But I noticed that if you don't wash the amount, it literally will have you like zoned out if you do too much. And my kids sometimes because of the scent, they like to put a lot of the peppermint and the lemon balm with their teas. And I'm like, you can't use that much. And so I just keep it separate now. I'm like, nah, you can't use that much. That's, that's too much, you know. So it's good for them, but I'm just careful of what they use. All right, so after I washed those, I went ahead and patted them dry. And um, just like I did with the mint, we're going to go ahead and string it through the colander. Now, the thing about lemon balm, sometimes their stems are a little bit thicker. So you just need a, a larger colander, like I said, right? And I'm going to get the leaves off. That way I can get them into the paper to dry out. And once they air dry out really good, you can actually put these in a microwave. I would do 15 seconds at a time. By 30 seconds, they're going to be dry and crispy like um, tea, right? Um, the air fryer for me is basically a convection oven, right? At a higher speed. So for my air fryer, I put it at 100. I think the lowest settings, 145. It would be best if it can go to 100. But 145, about 10 minutes, and everything is pretty much dry. I kind of got to watch it though, you know? So here is the deal. Y'all, this deal smells so good to me. Um... I just went ahead and put it aside so everything can dry. And then, of course, I did my lavender, and then I'll show you the results. I would say the Thai basil, because how thick the leaves are, was the one that stayed in the air fryer the longest, maybe at 12 minutes, y'all. But I would open it, let the air out a little bit, then close it. I didn't just let it run. I was very careful about using that um, basil in the air fryer because you don't want to burn it. It's hard to tell you how to use it. All I can say is on your lowest setting, maybe four or five minutes at a time. Just keep checking, keep checking, because you don't want to just sit it in there. You want to make sure that after you've washed your vegetables, like your herbs, that the leaves are indeed as dry as you can get them before you put them in there, because we're just essentially trying to take the moisture out of the leaves. I kind of, you know, kiki and giggle to myself when people say, you're trying to grow so much. Why are you growing so much? And here is a perfect example of a small deal bush. This is what you get from a small deal bush. So, yes, I would like to have like a bush or several bushes that equal up to like two feet because it actually cooks down or dries down to nothing um it's potent don't get me wrong <laughs> you only need a little bit when you're drawing for like um, pickles or whatever but it's absolutely nothing at all in here it's nothing y'all see it so this is why a lot of people grow a lot at one time especially if they're using the herbs right you need a lot So here is the mint that is dried. Now, of course, I told you some is in the fridge, some I dry, and then the rest I put in my juice for today.
So for this bundle, I hooked it on to a hanger and hung it up in my um, laundry. Now here's the results. This is the Thai basil. This is what it looks like. That whole little basil bush cooked down to this, okay? This is the dill. This is all I got out of it. Um, this is the rosemary. And this is all of the rosemary you saw me clip. Hopefully my rosemary grows, y'all. Finger, fingers crossed. This is the lemon balm. This is how much. Now you don't need a lot of this. <laughs> a teaspoon. So this will last, yes. But just so you see how much is actually in the jar. This was added to a jar that already had lavender in it. So this is what my lavender looked like. You can put that in cookies and cakes. Anything with citrus is really good. Or, or vanilla for lavender, just so you know. And then this, is, of course, is my mint. I do have another jar of mint that is a full jar. But I just want to show you all what it looks like and give you the option of drying, you know, naturally, hanging and drying, or just tossing it in the air fryer at its lowest setting for a few minutes at a time until you dry out your leaves. So thank y'all for hanging out with me today. Um, I hope this encourages someone to grow and to show you why you need to grow more and that those little small bushes, one plant here, one plant there, it really is not a lot, not to sustain you, definitely not, yeah, for sure. But anyway, here's the lettuce that I picked today, some of the kale, here are some of the arugula from the garden tower. Here's a little bit of cucumbers, some red onions. I also chopped up a little bit of a red sweet pepper to add on top. I even added a little bit of the um, green goddess seasoning, a little bit of, well, actually one of the carrots that I picked today. Went ahead and sliced it up. It was really good. Um, I actually ate the other carrot <laughs> right before I made this salad. I just want like a nice little like summer salad. You know how it is, but... You could tell the difference in the color of the carrots anyway from the grocery store. But add a few um, nasturtiums on here. A little bit of the, I want to say it's like a um, avocado cilantro yogurt dressing. And that was it, y'all. Just sat down, chilled out, and relaxed. And just wanted to say thank you all for supporting me and my channel and all the changes I've made this year. And, um... Just encourage you to grow your own food. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace and blessings.